Welcome, everyone, to episode 117 of One Hour, One Decision, 1H1D. I am Chris. And I am Tom. And we take 60 minutes and play a random game, or, in this case, a request by our guests. That's right, we have some friends to the show. Ben, Jerry, Kai, and from the extremely popular show, Play Along Podcast, who suggested we all play Man Eater. Uh, and decide is it worth your time guys thanks so much for being on the show and super excited to actually collaborate with you yeah thanks for having us we're super excited to talk about this this weird shark game <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we're still can me and chris did an episode on our show um we played chinatown detective agency yeah, yeah. um and gora goa and then afterwards, Tom was like, uh, Chris was like, oh, you know, da, da, da. and I was like, yeah, if you if you ever want a guest, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Slowly slipping that in there and be like, if you want, you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, super, super, super glad that we got to kind of make this finally work. Yes. And yeah, let's talk about Maneater. Um, this game was developed by Twip Tripwire Interactive, which um, they made the killing floor. I didn't realize that. Oh, did that, they? That's serious. That's yeah. So weird. That's very on brand. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, so, and this game came out back in May of 2020, according to my research. Um, as usual, I play this on the PC. 18.53 gigabytes on the PC. Tom? How much is uh, on the Xbox? On the Xbox One, 10.4 gigabytes. It's, it's always nice to see that. Uh, you know, that's what it should be. It's, sh- you know, the, the art assets should be smaller. It should come in tighter and it does. So, well, good job. Good job, well Xbox. Done. Well done, it's Chris. not usually the case as we <laughs> no. experience week to week. <laughs> yeah. And let's see. So what kind of game is this? Well, Chris, I put third person action, but I see your response and I like yours a lot better. Well, I put third, in parentheses, third fish slash party camera open world adventure game. Because you're not playing as a person. You're playing as a shark. I like I like third fish as a, <laughs> as a moniker for the, <laughs> the character. It's true, man. You're not, not, you're not a person. I mean, I guess in a way. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to think too much into that anymore. <laughs> but um, what is the game loop? I have swim through an open environment, consuming prey and causing mayhem to complete your objectives. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to say eat everything else to get bigger and progress the story. <laughs> I like that. Eat things and get big. That's that's yeah. the premise. <laughs> fill your belly. And, yeah. <laughs> you got to fill that eat belly. Shit and uh, avenge your mother's death. Is, is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's true. It's true. And let's get into those things that happened in this game and things that we liked in this game. So, Ben, I'm going to ask you, what did you like about this game? Oh, man. Uh, the first thing that kind of stands out, I think, is just the the tone and the sense of humor. Um, yeah. This game does not take itself seriously whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, the opening is a, like kind of a little bit traumatic, really um <laughs> it's basically like you are like ripped from your mother's stomach by a shark <laughs> hunter who has his own tv show yeah it's really aggressive it's really weird <laughs> yeah but yeah in terms of likes i mean that's the main kind of like it's got that like um like duck hunters kind of vibe to it like so i, I like the sense of humor and stuff and i like the narrator i don't know the guy's name Oh, Chris but, Parnell. Chris Parnell. Chris yep. Parnell. Yeah. 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 I know. I know his voice, and I've I've seen him in a whole bunch of stuff. Like the dad from Rick and Morty. Yep. He's probably what he's best known for these days. SNL. Oh damn! Yeah. And SNL Archer. for the. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Leads plays in lots of things. He's yeah, in a lot. Yeah. Of, he's... he's in a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's it's that humor kind of carries into the commentary that they have, of like you know the the teenage shark swims through the ocean. <laughs> eating everything inside and crap like that like it's that whole kind of <laughs> and i wasn't expecting customization that was um that was an yes. interesting aspect of of this game <laughs> right yeah, up my alley. You, you definitely pimp your shark in this game it's just... yes you do yeah <laughs> yeah um pimp your shark that should be the title of it 
And I, <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> I think mainly like my likes are just kind of the the gameplay and the sense of humor. Like if you if you like Goat Simulator, you're gonna freaking love Man Eater. Mm, yeah, it's got that same kind of vibe to it. What about you? Um, so it's funny that he says if you like Goat Simulator, you you'd like this game. I I don't I didn't like Goat Simulator at all, <laughs> but mm. but I very much enjoyed this game. It it shocked me in a lot of ways. I was yeah. not expecting like a story at all, right. and so yeah. when it throws you in there and it has this reality TV show, but at the same time, like that's the antagonist. And then as the protagonist, you have this like nature documentary style thing so that they're like <laughs> slammed up against each other. I, I like it a lot. I like I really like the way that it was done because it it's it really sets up the the bad guys really well. Um, mm. And then at the same time, humanizes this man eating killer shark that you're going to be playing. <laughs> uh, so I, th I thought that was really great. The, the humor's great. Um upgrade system is cool uh and then there's plenty of stuff to do which again i was kind of surprised mm. by i thought that was just going to be kind of like a a pointless swim around you know bite things kind of game uh but no it's it's really structured really well there's really good quest system that uh, tells you yeah. where to go it's it's kind of hard to get lost except there's in a, a fast cases. travel system which i was like think when I figured that out, I was like, thank God. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't figure that out in my own. <laughs> I was surprised. Yeah, if you hover over the caves, again? you yeah. can like yeah. hold the fast travel to them. Yeah, um, and I mean, like I said about Goat Simulator, I think I preferred this to Goat Simulator purely because of that. Like, yeah, Goat Simulator is kind of like a, a sandbox and you just sort yes. of stick around. Like, mm -hmm. Manny has got a different. Like a little said, more it's got a different approach. It. It's got more structure. There are objectives. Yeah, right. like yeah. kind it's of Tony Hawk's Goat Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> when when Kai yes. compared it to like an early two thousands like Tony Hawk game, I was like, that's exactly yeah. what the tone of this game is. It, it, like, <laughs> yeah. it embodies it's just like it's an just early Project A. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's the entire the shtick. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, so I was just to say, like in terms of the gameplay as well, I don't know if you guys did the whole like swimming with just your fin out of the water to like scare oh, yeah. the beach so goers and stuff like that and like diving out of the water i got land stranded at one point as well that was an interesting experience yeah. you can do backflips too which is always fun yeah i totally yeah, it was a lot of fun yeah um i i thought also that there was a there was a there was a clever way of stripping your abilities right like because yeah. at the beginning you're basically like this all-powerful shark that can like take down any, like a bunch of hunters and stuff like that and then you just watch yourself get gutted and then you become the baby, baby and then, then you lose everything yeah so yeah. that was that was kind of that was kind of a cool way to do that and i felt um there was a there was a lot of tension going up against other predators at least well, especially uh, as the baby question. shark too yeah those crocodiles yeah, like, like, oh the crocodiles man they were anxiety they were tough, all the man. time i like i had like two or three of them chasing after me at one point and i was like yeah. what is going on like, leave yeah. me alone i thought at one point they'd like they just back away and go back to their like no they area. chase each other no, it's like yeah, once like, they're right, that's fight. it yeah. <laughs> yeah so you know that was cool um anything else you guys want to bring about likes in this I just like the whole RPG system. I mean, this whole like mm. customization and doing everything is what I love about RPGs. <laughs> it, it definitely feels like RPG light too, because you'll get upgrades and you'll get right. things that you can upgrade, but usually you get them kind of one at a time. There's not like a ton of weapons or whatever you're getting at once. So it definitely feels yeah. digestible too. And I yeah. love that stuff. And I mean, I've, I've seen playthroughs of this, like YouTubers I watch who play like sort of seven or eight hours of this game. And some of the upgrades you get are like ridiculous. You can get like electrified teeth that like stun enemies Ooh, yes. and oh, bite them fun. and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it, it's it, it not gets just crazy. like it organic. Gets off the walls with its upgrade. You can you can like mechanically pimp out your shark. Like some of the stuff is just crazy. Wow. <laughs> can you get lasers? Uh, I, do you know what? I, I, I wouldn't be know, surprised. But it wouldn't honestly. be surprised if you could. Yeah, yeah. would not be surprised. <laughs> you get electric shark teeth, so lasers aren't that far out of the realm of possibility. Oh, man, Dr. Evil will be very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so um if we're if we're with our likes, let's let's talk about some dislikes. Uh, Kai, I'm gonna throw this to you. What did you not like about this game? 
Uh, I mean, generally, it was a good experience. So there's not a ton of dislikes for this game. I think a lot of the controls could probably be improved, uh, especially mm. as you're saying, like going up against like alligators. And like, I get a little bit that it's supposed to have like a built in kind of uh, like difficulty of, okay, you gotta, I mean, it is an RPG. So you've got to like figure out, go fight smaller enemies until you can take on something larger and larger as you progress through the game. But it's like a lot of the time I would, even though you can lock on, locking on because of the enemies moving so quickly, you lose them. Yeah. And you're just kind of swimming in circles trying to look for where the thing is, and then it just attacks you out of nowhere. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, being underwater and being a shark is not the most natural experience compared to, you know, <laughs> just being like a fucking soldier uh, or whatever. So uh, I think that could have been improved uh, in general, just the way that you interact with the world. Um, I mean... Other than that, the environments are super fucking cool for the most part. I think uh, there is there could be some better like layout as far as things go. And I mean, I don't know if this was purposeful, but like getting to certain uh, like event points or whatever that like missions uh, always felt like a little unclear and like the the icon itself will just appear directly in a straight line. And I think having something that's like a, almost like a blood trail uh, or some sort of just highlighted path in which you're like, yeah, like a a threat uh, trail that you could follow rather than just like trying to navigate onto a specific point. And then you end up like jumping across land or you end up being blocked by some building and having to go around in another direction. Um, And also, uh, as much as I like the intro and I think is like from a story perspective, it does a good job in like really engaging the player quickly, giving you the abilities of being the mommy shark and having all of the, uh, the abilities. It, it like lulls you into a false sense of security. Yeah. It is pretty the first level where you're like, like, yeah, you're like, Oh, this is fucking sick. I can do everything. Like I'm all powerful shark. Uh, and then you end up as the, the, you know, the main character, character shark uh and you're going on that first level and you like interact with an alligator then you get your ass beat <laughs> yeah. four times yeah, you in get, a row. Way, you get like, way too confident i'm like i can take on that alligator yeah you're you like ah oh, take it down god damn it and like i also think it's odd that they gave you mechanics in that tutorial section where you play the larger shark like the tail whip and grabbing things and then they take those away. Like, mm-hmm. if you're going to teach me how to do something, don't take that away. Right. Like, I'll if I unlock it later, I'll learn how to do it at that point in time. But to be like, this is a mechanic in the game that you could do. And then suddenly you're like the baby shark and you can't do all any of that until you're like level six. It's like, well, right. why did you why did you take time for me to learn how to do this? <laughs> you know, that's how I died to my first alligator. Right. But generally, like, I think overall was a positive experience and the the one last negative for this is that i just don't like this game has the tone of a lot of games that came out in kind of that 2009 to 2014 weird humor kind of doesn't take itself too seriously like i don't know who this is for now in a sense Mm. like i mean it's it's interesting and like cool but i I don't know who like the necessarily is the target audience for this other than people who kind of (laughs) i was like us that played those games yeah who i exactly who like grew up playing those kind of weird and esoteric ass comedy games that are just kind of weird um so yeah i'd be I, i don't know how well this sold but i would be surprised if it did like incredibly well just given it's kind of an odd premise and i don't know i don't know generally who this would be for at the end of the day well like it, it definitely hit um like the twitch streamers and stuff like that like mm, when it yeah. came out there was there was definitely it's some good content of... creator games yeah yeah like... yeah yeah and i wonder if that's more just that it came out in may of 2020 um, mm, that's true like right mm, when like we're like right mid peak yeah. yeah. twitch content time right. yeah people are hungry to just try to fill that content void, especially, you know, being locked inside. So um, maybe that worked out for them. And maybe it would, I mean, it's a, it's a goat simulator effect, like goat simulator predated, I think a little bit of of the Twitch kind of bubble, but was like the PewDiePie is where it really sailed off where it was kind of just a meme. Right. That people could engage with, but I don't like goat simulator was so low budget. And I think a little bit more of an indie game compared to this, that, like the rough edges are almost what made it even funnier. Whereas this is so polished and right. so complete that it's not like 
it, it doesn't have the same uh, roughness that Goat Simulator does, where it's just like, oh, this is fucking ridiculous. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. this is like a real game that people put effort into. Yeah. It's just, yeah. you know, Shark Souls or whatever you want to call it. Shark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shark Souls. That's a good one. I was going to say, like, is it technically a Metroidvania? Like, does it meet the definition of a Metroidvania? I mean, you can make that argument all you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not... I mean, I, I might make that argument in, in part of my dislikes if, if you're interested in hearing some. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, what, uh, do you, what do you got? I think, I think it's very easy, and it was touched on a bit, where it's it's easy to bite off more than you can chew. Ha-ha. Hey. Uh, <laughs> because hey. the game unlocks these, these bonus objectives, like mm-hmm. take on these stronger fish or fight some alligators or whatever, and you don't have that power or that ability yet. So you see the objective, or maybe it's a license plate up up way up there. It's like yeah. you know that you need to go get that thing, but you don't have the powers to get it right now. And that's like the hallmark of the Metroidvania is like you're going <laughs> to be coming back here later with some ability a to do of, this thing. A lot of thing. backtracking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess I the also, good thing is that as, what, um, as Jared mentioned, you can fast travel back as opposed yeah, to... you can fast yes. travel, which is nice. Yes. Uh, I... I hated some of where the objective markers were because it is mm-hmm. hard to find them. Like I agree a hundred percent there because of this third, you know, the elevation dimension where it's like, Oh, this land thing I need to get to is actually in a cave underwater. And yeah. so if yeah, you're facing at it from some other angle, it's just like, how do I even get there? Yeah. Like, you don't know where it is that you're trying to get to. Um, so yeah, like having a, a a scent trail or something like that would have fixed that for sure. Mm. Yeah. Especially uh, like you have like that ability, like that you get the sonar, sonar ability yeah. very quickly. Mm-hmm. Like you would think mm-hmm. that they would have thought about that later, but anyway. Yeah. And, and I do think that a lot of the game for me felt like I was just mush- mashing buttons, mm-hmm. um, especially was, the, the frustrating <laughs> losing, losing the abilities and yeah. then yeah. not realizing that you don't have them. So I'm like, I'm trying to, you know, tail smack and nothing's happening. And I think it's me. Um, but it's you because I haven't it. unlocked it yet. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I, th- those sorts of things really bugged me. Yeah. I, I mean, I felt like with my, uh, with my playthrough, um, the game felt like a collectathon for me in a way, because you're, you're just like, you're eating all these things to just get points to then yourself an ability later on um and on 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 the pc for me the game crashed and had some weird oh, technical bugs yeah like i think one of the uh cut scenes was like the audio was completely out and then yeah, mm-hmm. the game actually just literally just crashed on me uh, but that might be my computer i don't know what's going on with it but um and in- speaking of audio chris yeah. the music right like this, uh, how do you yeah. not bite off uh, Jaws here? Like, where's my dun 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 dun? Like, well, uh, come on! It seems yeah. like such a low hanging fruit that I, I would think. You know, I understand you can't steal John Williams' music and put it into your your game that where you have to put it an for octave it. higher and say that it's an interpretation. Right. <laughs> this sort of game perfectly suits like making a MIDI version of the Jaws theme. Right, and like yeah. it would fit the humor of the game and everything. Like I'm sure they could have, like, I mean, all the narrator had to do was be like, they don't have the budget for the original score, so they have, <laughs> or they just have play like, the, the first note and cut artist. it off there, and like, oh, we can't afford the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this game does feel like it. Aside from soundtrack, it feels like it deserves having you know a playlist that's continually rotating. Like all these games mm-hmm. from previously yep. would have just music that would play through them all. Right. Uh, like I just want like '90s pop punk or like early <laughs> 2000s pop punk to play in the background. Yeah. yeah. Like if I was jamming out to some Nine Inch Nails, I definitely would have had like more exactly. fun experience. <laughs> yeah. Especially because it's supposed to be like a TV show and like Shark Week, and so if right. you just take inspiration from like early 2000s Shark Week of like, oh it's yeah, like super edgy, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 edgy yeah. rock music. Like yeah, yeah, it would it would fit ish. Yeah. Um. I and the other thing I felt like this game and you kind of touched on it because you're calling it Shark Souls. It did feel grindy with yeah. this, mm-hmm. like where you're, you're, you're really like, you know, one of the first, obje- one of the first few objectives is to get to level four. But I was like, if I, if I just went around just biting everything and like, I get experience for like killing yeah. things, but it's not enough. You have to go and do like the more difficult things and then the, then you get more experience or like 
you know, the caches, and then there's the, the license plates, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. Tom. Um, and then obviously taking out the, the predators. And yeah. yeah, like, so that was, that was kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely got uh, lost with the yes. beak and stuff. Like, it just disappeared. And that was weird. I was like, it was annoying. I don't know. But uh, any other dislikes before we get to our other thoughts? Or notables? Yeah, just, I think just one more thing, which is, it was very unclear when going through, I think the, the beginning, like Bayou level and then kind of into the next level of mm-hmm. you would do the missions. So you do whatever like the boss fight is and then they would go away and then there would be no other missions like yeah. that would just preload after that. You would have to go to different locations and then eventually unlock them. But you have to get like weirdly close to them for them to like show up in your whatever journal, shark journal. I don't know what mm-hmm. that's supposed <laughs> yeah. to be. Shark journal. Uh, and so it was just like, sometimes you just didn't know what to do. It was like, oh, okay, well, I killed the 10 catfish. I killed the like main right. enemy here. What What is going on now? Right. And like, it literally took me dying and going back to the cave. And then it loaded the next thing I was supposed to do, which mm-hmm. I was like, that's, that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem like this is how this is supposed to go. And it yeah. was kind of like a continual process of just like, what am I supposed to do? I also just felt that it was really slow in the beginning, especially because they gave us that intro as like the ultimate shark. Of like getting, yeah. as you said, it's very grindy. Like getting to level five is not easy. Mm, it was right. like it's very tedious, and you're killing a lot of small, you know, enemies in a sense, or low level enemies to you know get up to a certain level. And so I think it would have been much nicer to do, especially maybe just the beginning of this game, like a much quicker curve of getting to you know a certain level, and then like obviously you can level out as you move into higher levels of like ten to fifteen. Yeah, but just at the beginning, it feels like you have to put a lot of effort in just to make very small gains. And it, even as you're leveling up, like your shark is getting bigger, but you're not really unlocking anything meaningful. You're just like having to buy upgrades in a sense, whereas Mm -hmm. they like instantly give you two things and you're like, Oh, this is going to be a mechanic. And then it never really is revisited until you get a lot of stuff later on, which I I felt was a strange, strange decision on their part. Yeah. 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 As polished as it was, it just, for certain things, it just didn't make sense, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, and I, like I mentioned in at the beginning of the episode, this is by the makers of Killing Floor, which I tried playing again and it wasn't great. But you know, so <laughs> there was, there was... I haven't played the original in a while. I remember the second one was was okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but this game does have Xbox Cloud saves, Xbox Play anywhere, which means if you buy it once, you get to play it uh, on your Xbox or PC or however else. X Cloud is there as well. Uh, but you do need a controller. And how long to beat says this game takes about eight to ten hours to beat. Now, uh, Tim and I only play this for the hour. You guys played this for a little bit longer, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, like Jared, how long did you did you actually play this for? Yeah, I think when I looked, because on Xbox you can look at your stats and see like exactly how much time. I think I put like two hours and fifteen minutes or so okay. into the game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And do you have any other thoughts on this game, though, Jared, before we get to our final decision? Uh, I mean, no, I think that's it. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I, I do want to point out something, Chris, which yeah. is that in a strange turn of events, uh, you know, we run into problems a lot of times where we one of us has played the game, uh, but the other one hasn't. And then we have like, mm. do we still go through with it or do we reroll or, or what, what do we do here? This game has been sitting on my Xbox One for <laughs> a long time, like a long, long time. It's a game I've wanted to play, but for some reason never got around to playing. It's been installed. Um, so I was very happy that you guys came in and were like, hey, let's play Man Eater. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, this is great. This is a perfect excuse for me to finally play this game. So I'm sitting on my console for I, yeah, months, I, 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 may, maybe I a year. I don't know. Right, like, no, I swear that you had you had already played this game. It nope. felt like a game that that Tom would would want to play that's, or at least give it a shot. That's crazy because I took one out of your book and I hit the surprise me button to choose this for this episode. Awesome. So it just happened to be Manny. Nice. It was just like it was meant to be. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we are at our at the at the point, Tom, and yes. play along friends, uh, where we have to decide: Are we playing this game? continuing to play this game or uh throwing it into the river chump as chump i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Why, why, why don't you start this time, Chris? Yeah, so I understand the hype of this game when it came out, and uh, this was an interesting experience. But uh, to be honest, I got tired of the game by the end of my playthrough, and I'm probably not going to keep playing this game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was like I, I, I don't, I didn't like, I didn't feel like the progression was fast enough for me or as rewarding for me. Yeah. Um, and like it just, like, I was like, okay, I'm just going to go through this thing. Like, uh, maybe if this had like a co-op, that would be kind of cool. Like, that would like, be cool. Shark like buddies, two sharks, like going you know? around. Like, that would be cool. I, like, like I, I feel like I feel like I was having the same feeling like I had as a Dark Souls game where it was like I just didn't feel like I was progressing enough. I didn't I wasn't mm. getting good enough. And yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of my thoughts here. Uh, oh, yeah. Tom. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, my time with this flew by. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by the fact that it had a story. Again, I was expecting a really like sandboxy, very much more like a goat simulator. Um, so I was very happy that it wasn't that way because as anybody who knows what kinds of games I like, I like third person action games with a very <laughs> heavy story focus. Um, and this had those things going for it. Um, I think it seems to me, it was fun. I mean, granted, I only played it for an hour. Uh, it also doesn't seem overly demanding with my time, which you've just verified for me, Chris, in that it's uh, eight to 10 hours, right? Uh, right. So I'm definitely going to keep it uh, because yeah. I think I can beat this and finish this and I think I'll have a good time with it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Guys, what what about you? You guys play this a bit longer than us, so yeah. I'm curious, does the game get better after the hour or is it more the same? Or- I think... I share this a similar uh, feeling with Tom where like this is the kind of game that I like and knowing it's like eight to 10 hours. It's like that's a very doable chunk of time. And for me, I I like the RPG elements in here. They are light and I do love that kind of grind. But after playing past that hour after, like I said, about two and a half two fifteen, 215, it is a lot of the same of what you've been doing is Uh eating eating like smaller fish and leveling up and fighting bosses so i can see people thinking that like that loop would get tedious but i love like grindy stuff like that so i'm gonna definitely try (laughs) to try to beat it too plus there's all like (laughs) weird like cosmetic things and i was like like i love that like give me all the cosmetics give me all the upgrades (laughs) (laughs) cool for me personally i think i fall into uh into chris's ballpark um i played I want to say like three, maybe three and a half hours of this game. And it is just more of the same. It is just more eating stuff, getting bigger, blah, blah. And for me personally, having known how powerful you can become because of the intro, it feels somewhat redundant working towards that because all I'm really working towards is like... What you've already I know there there are sort of goofy other stuff you can get like electrified teeth and that. I'm I'm not a fan of grindy stuff whatsoever. Mm. Um, uh, that's that's not my that's not my jam. Um, but I mean, like most things with Game Pass, it's on Game Pass, so give it yeah. give it a try. Don't pay the thirty three bucks for it. I don't know who out there <laughs> is paying thirty three bucks uh, for yeah, this game. Get Game Pass instead. That's a much yeah. better. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah if you if you want goat simulator but more you'll like it but for me personally it didn't it didn't hit Hmm. i think i think yeah i think the the charm is there but the gameplay is doesn't match the tone in a sense like people who i think would generally enjoy super grindy challenging like okay rpgs are not going to necessarily go into this very comedic shark game and be like, yeah, this is a good balance of these two things. <laughs> it's like, I think I would jump into this game again if I was end game, like almost the Grand Theft Auto principle. Like if I could just fuck around and be a shark and like, I just want to play something for a couple hours where it's fun and I can just go terrorize people. And like, that's the whole thing. Like, yeah, I would, I would definitely do that. Going back in to try to like upgrade my shark. Like, I just don't care. Like it's not... <laughs> Like that's why I'm asking, like, who is this for? In a sense of like, I was like, yeah, I was gonna raise my hand too. If I want to be challenged and play a hard game, I'll go play Elden Ring. Like that's gonna be a much better experience for me. And if I want to go play something silly, 
you know, I'll go f- around in Grand Theft Auto. Like, I'm not, this is not interesting enough. And, like, this is what I was telling Jared. Like, this entire game just feels like someone played the peyote scene from GTA 5 and was like, oh, let's make a, a game yeah. that's exactly like that. And it's like, uh, yeah, but it, that premise can only get you so far. And hearing that it is just consistently kind of the the same loop experience of, like, you're a shark, you're getting bigger, you're fighting enemies. Like, I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> and there, there are other games that have, you know, this this level of comedy. If you want that, if that's the thing you're seeking. It doesn't do any one thing good enough that would make me come back to it. And so, you know, if this game is for you, dope. But I, it's it's getting, it's getting <laughs> uninstalled. <laughs> never have to look at man eater again right never again hey you experienced it that's all that matters right Hell so yeah. those are our thoughts let us know what you think of this game follow us and say hello on twitter at tc1h1d or shoot us an email at tc1h1d at outlook.com check out our next streams on twitch at twitch.tv slash 1h1d and if you're watching this on youtube send us a comment down below we'll try to respond but you know sometimes we don't Anyway, 1H20 is part of the YouTube network. And if you like gaming podcasts and other cool content, check out quitthebuild.com slash network. Now, guys, before we let you go, we got to do two things. One, we got to find out what we're playing next. And mm-hmm. two, we got to let everyone know, you know, who you guys are and what your what your whole spiel is. So, mm-hmm. uh, Tom, let's let's spin that or hit that surprise button and find out what we're playing next here we go okay we are playing before we leave Bef- oh. before we that's appropriate yeah <laughs> this is appropriate for us. yeah so it is it's apparently some sort of uh sim style game i don't know but we'll, we'll find out what it is and uh guys again thank you so much for joining us on this episode please let everyone know uh about your show and where we can find you on the on the internet yeah thanks for having us again guys this was a a ton of fun for sure but yeah we're play along podcast we play through games in kind of a book club format what we'll do is myself kind men will each take turns choosing a game we'll break that game up into sections and then we come together each week to talk about that section specifically one thing is we do dive into like everything about the game we dive heavily into the narrative. So you are trying to avoid spoilers for any game that we're playing. We suggest that you either play the game first and then come back and listen or play along with us. It's the name of the show. (laughs) (laughs) But you can find us Play Along Pod Instagram and Twitter. And we have a new website, playalongpod.com. It has all of our content, all of our socials, our Discord channel, and a lot of the bonus content that we do there too. So yeah, check us out. F***ing pro. (laughs) <laughs> great joke so, he could do that in his sleep I, I know controversial with your guys take on chrono trigger but that's uh that's something that you and tom that's can what we're known for now everyone's like those <laughs> yeah. are the guys that didn't like chrono trigger <laughs> yeah. it's okay you can be wrong about things it's fine <laughs> <laughs> we, we know right. we've heard it <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. all right guys thank you so much again and thanks everyone for tuning into this episode and we'll catch you on the next one thanks everybody Thank you, guys. Peace out. Bye. Bye.